welcome back to another episode review of Monday J. This is their third episode and things are you know, going good to the series so um it keeps me entertained at least. Uh just wrap up last episode I've just been getting towards uh I think the fight with Gal though that's just the main focus this week. And this episode opens with Kurosage putting the water tree back, I guess I guess they had a spot for it. Before, before they got taken away or something, I don't, I don't know, but they put it back in this like shrine thing, and it, I guess it floods the area, giving, I guess restoring the, the plant life, I guess, because that's, to me that's what I guess would do, would restore the uh, plant life for them. And also, fixing that, it fixes the bath for the girls, so they can take a bath, which is kind of random. And the most random part of that, I think, was the cat was actually in there with them. Swimming around, I guess, taking a bath, but it was just kind of weird. But eh, I like the cat; he's entertaining. That was pretty funny. So I guess you could say the gift games. They actually do get an item, a gift that I assume fixes the community or fixes your area, depending on what which guy you, you I guess, take it from. Maybe because I guess Water Dragon give you water, so you have to find I guess something that I don't know if they have a food god. I don't think they do. That'd be funny. <laughs> And uh, more Izayo showing off. He, I guess he catches these intruders that are part of Galdo's community, and uh, he's like, "You know, what are you guys doing here?" Type thing. Or more like, just scare him enough. But they eventually reveal that, you know, they don't like, they didn't like Galdo, so they're trying to revolt against him. But apparently, I guess they're obviously too weak to do it themselves. So that kind of tells you that the, the main team has to go in there and. Uh, do what they do, fix their, fix everything up, and while that's going on, you have uh, Kurosage showing off all these, I guess, <laughs> outfits that uh, Shirayasha makes her wear. It's like your typical stuff: schoolgirl uniform, uh, nurse uniform, ch Chinese dress, things like that. And I guess it shows that Shirayasha just, since she's so powerful, maybe she uses that against Kurosage for little things like this. I mean, nothing bad. I mean. It's this is as far as I know, anyway. But she gives the outfit to uh, to Asuka, and Yu Yu San gets doesn't get a new outfit, which is weird. As like Asuka gets a new outfit, what, why don't you want? But <laughs> that's a small small thing. And while that happened, and they had Azayo talking to a little green haired kid uh, named Jin, and he sort of pushes him to be like the official figurehead of the group, which is kind of. Strange man. I thought Kurosaki was the leader of that group, but I'm guessing I I took it as him giving uh, I guess Jin maybe like a morale boost. You know, because right now the community's still weak. Yeah, they got water and stuff, but they're still considered weak because like last time they're in the outside ring. So I, that to me, I took that as he was making him the leader, kind of so you would you know promote him. Oh hey, look, you're it's just a normal kid doing. The, the games and stuff, not some human, I guess. Which works. I mean, I don't really see him as a leader, but I'm sure he's has his, has his, an idea of what he wants to do. Yeah, but he took, I took it mother way as he wants to fight demons, so if he has someone else to lure them out, he can jump in there and fight. But uh, he's not the type that's going to steal the glory type of character. We saw last week, he actually stepped down when, uh, you saw him want to fight, so he's just like, okay, well, you you can do this. So. Maybe that's what his main goal is. He just wants to fight a demon, or maybe he was not letting on to who he really is. Maybe he maybe he is a demon himself and doesn't doesn't realize it yet. But they fight um, Galdor, which now he's transformed into a full full grown cat now. Which I assume whoever did that to him took made him I guess beast. His beast side took over more than anything. So now he's just a mindless tiger. Which pushes Asuka to fight fight him. I mean, Yusan did put up a fight at the beginning. So I guess you could say I mean, Asuka is the main focus of this episode. Because we do learn more about her power. As uh, Kurosaki calls it, the authority power. Or the command power, something like that. But she can use it to give orders. She did it to uh, Jin when he... He was there fighting. He's like, get out of here. But he picked her up and 
carried out, ran out of that building. Oh, the big man's running. That's pretty, pretty weird. And he just drops her. So she gets mad at him for doing that. This is like, you were the one who told him to do that, so don't get mad at him. <laughs> but also, she can, I guess, use it on items. I'm not sure if she used it on the, the lantern, because was, there was no thing that wasn't lit. So I was like, maybe she just told it, like, light, light up or something. And it, it activated on her orders. I could see her doing that. And, uh... I guess you can use that power to buff weapons and buff items. Because during the fight with uh, Galado, she told the sword, give me your power. And then the sword kind of like powered up a little bit and she was able to kill Galado with that. Which kinda, it's kind of cool. It tells you that she can make buff items. And she used it on plant, plants too. So I'm surprised that her power isn't limited to just humanoids and things like that. Because now she can animals, objects, demons, whatever, anything she wants probably. But I'm gonna assume here that it doesn't work on someone like Sherry Asher or someone with high level magic or high level power. So imagine she does that to the like, demon main demon lord, uh, kill yourself, and he does it. That'd be kind of, kind of cheesy. He did that. So and after all that fight, Jin kind of like steps up saying that we we have defeated Galdo and blah 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 blah. So those guys can join his community and thus grow in the community even more which which is nice because like I think it's at the end even though they won they're still weak on manpower so they, they need more people and as we close the episode Sherry Asha I guess someone's cleaning her area and then this guy with like two-toned hair walks up asking about her I'm assuming he's probably a demon or a vampire or something stupid like always oh, Galdo's brother <laughs> I'm betting something like that. It's, it's kind of funny. And I guess the only thing I can think of and say it and all this is, I think Isaiah is still one to stay like, in the background. So he doesn't want to steal the glory from the people that I guess represent the community. So he's so he's, he's kind of a guest there, or a new guy. Or he's he knows the demon lord and wants to keep it a secret. That could be an interesting twist too. I know we saw in the first, yeah, first episode or second episode that there was a, a flashback to like his real life thing. So slowly but surely, we're learning small things here and there about the background care about the characters anyway. Even uh, Asuka, you saw something about her, and Kira Yasuo was asking her about, you know, tell me about your world, and she was just like, thought about it. She's like, I'd rather not. <laughs> I'd rather learn about more about you. So, and you, we learned about her backstory last time. So. I'm not sure as much we can learn past that. Well, anyway, this was a not a not the best episode, but at least Oscar got to step step up and fight. So, until next time, see you later.